Alright, so in this video, let's talk about the fish protected components that aren't the structural elements, aren't the gears and other similar mechanisms, and aren't the electronic components. And we're going to go over the electronic components in probably a very future video. But first off, let's talk about these blocks right here. Now, these are structural elements, but I forgot to mention them in the last video, and I just wanted to mention them right now. These are metal building blocks. And so they can be used, mo they're the primary thing that most people would probably use as structural elements. Um, when I was in seventh grade, I didn't have access to these, and so I was not able to use these. That's why I sort of forgot about them. But when I went to school, I saw them in a bucket. I uh, just thought I would bring them to show you guys. And so this is probably something that you'll use if you have access to them. But I guess it's more creative if you don't use these elements. With that being said, I want to first introduce you to the main element that you'll be using with your fish protecting components, which is these axles. Now, these axles can range in length from um, 30 millimeters to even 260, but I don't have a 260 one. Probably the closest I have one, probably the closest I have is this one right here, which is maybe 200 centimeters. And so these axles are very important because all the gears and all the mechanisms are mounted on these axles, these metal axles. And of course they come in different lengths to, depending on how much space you have and what your use is. Um, and overall they're just very useful. On this tray right here, we have a few of the things that can go around an axle. And so the first part I'm going to show you is this locking washer right here. And so these locking washers are very hard to mount onto an axle, but once they're on there, they're very hard to move, and they keep things in place. Another cool thing about them is that they have a cutout for rivets, which we'll get to in a tiny bit. But the locking washer is probably one of the most used components for securing things in place so that they don't slide back and forth. Similarly, these C-clips, which go on a axle, also prevent parts from sliding back and forth. So if you have a gear on a wheel, let's use this wheel right now as an example, and the wheel is mounted on a building block, let's say you don't want the axle to slide back and forth, you can either use these C-clips or the locking washer, mount it on, you can even snap it in from the side to prevent that axle from moving back and forth. In addition to those clips, you also have spacers. You have this regular small spacer, which is very thin. Just adds a tiny bit of space um, in case you need to keep things aligned. You can use these. Um, one thing that you might use these for, and in addition, there is a longer spacer. And you also have the long spacer right here, which is probably about six times as long, maybe five times as long as the small spacer. And there's also a black washer, which I just noticed. I'm not sure if this actually comes with the Fisher Technic parts. I just found it in the parts bin, but maybe this is a Fisher Technic piece, or it could just be a plastic spacer. One thing worth men mentioning is this part that has a peg hole acceptor. I mean, a peg acceptor and a hole where it looks like an axle can fit through. This is maybe not intended for an axle. I think it's intended for a string to go through, but you can also use this as an axle holder. And as a segue to our next topic, there is these adapters that you can mount onto a axle, or this can also attach onto a peg, I believe, to attach these uh, clip axles. These are plastic and they go in rectangular holes and they snap in place, they clip in place, and you can't turn them around. And so these might be very useful if you need to attach um, an axle without it spinning back and forth. And you can even extend the length of your axles, these clip axles, by using this ac clip axle to clip axle uh, adapter, which simply snaps on and just increases that length in case you need it to be longer. And so we have a very wide selection of clip axles. 
as you can see right here, there are various different lengths. I don't know how much this goes to, but apparently it can go from 30 millimeters to 180 millimeters. Uh, let me correct myself. I've met, if I said centimeters here before, I meant 30 millimeters to about 260 millimeters. Next part I want to show you is this groove to pin adapter, which can convert a groove into a pin. And this might be useful if you have two things that you want to connect that are facing each other with a groove. And so this simply slides on and allows you to use that as uh, an adapter to connect it to. Similarly, these groove to ridge adapters allow you to take a groove and convert it entirely lengthwise to a ridge that allows you to connect two parts uh, as long as they have long enough grooves. And an interesting thing to note that in comparison with the other part is that if you do it this way, the part can't go horizontal. There's just no way for it to go the other, the other direction. And this might be useful if, let's say, the parts are fragile and you don't want it to twist, uh, and you just want it to stay in that one direction. Like, this part would be strong to resist uh, any turning, but this part would be very easily bent uh, around. And you even have a ridge that is twice as long to connect uh, two block long grooves, just like that. Very cool. Last thing I want to mention are these parts right here that have this clip at the end. These are actually axles for the wheels. And so a wheel like this can clip on and spin freely. Uh, similar with this part and this part. Now, I want to bring back this part right here. Uh, this is called a strut. And you can see that it has these holes that axles can go inside, but it also has these rectangle holes. And these holes are meant for rivets. And rivets, such as these two, are exactly as the name describes. They are these pieces that go in through the rectangular holes one way and turn around to secure it in that position. And you can take two rivets, I mean two struts, connect them together, line up the rectangles, insert the strut, turn it around, and that is a fairly tight connection. So you have a choice of a double length rivet or just a single length rivet that can only hold one strut. And something that's cool about these is that you can even convert these to be used with, usable with pegs using this strut adapter. So what you do is you locate this peg or clip on the end and just insert it into the strut. And that allows you to use it as a uh, ridge. So I can now insert a block onto it. And uh, I'm going to be honest, it's not a very tight connection. This is still very easy to separate. But it's there if you need it. And so you have these parts right here that can be attached to struts using rivets. And these are very similar to struts. They might be um, different types of connectors. Like I know there's a T-shaped one. There's This one's a L-shaped one. And these two are straightaways. This one has all of the rectangles lined up while this one has the middle one turned uh, perpendicularly. And there's also, I believe, a um, hexagonal or a six-sided, a six-pointed six star one or a four-pointed intersection one, but these are also used to just connect different struts in different fashions. And you can see that the struts can um, line up with them and even slide up and down them. So that might be another reason why you might use these. There's still a bit of wiggle room, but if you need to make a, maybe like a drawer or something that travels on rails, maybe this would be your type of deal. Now, there's also, chains and chain links um and unfortunately i only have one of them to show you but what you can do with these is you can attach multiple of these together 
to form full chains. And then you can even put treads on them. But hopefully I'll be able to show you these in a different video when I actually have multiple of them. Some other things is that you have a cable drum if you need to attach a string and have something being pulled by a winding pulley. Or a drum like this, which does the same thing. Then there's also a hook piece. And you also have a spring piece. Now I never use this, but it might be useful to have for any mechanism that might need suspension. Now, I've mentioned these parts before, but they're still very important to go over again. These are the collet chucks, which, as you've seen in the previous videos, screw into gears in order to keep them secured to the axle, because otherwise the axle will uh, spin freely without the gear, or the gear will spin freely on the axle. Um, and any movement that you, you make the gear have might not transfer to the axle. And so we use a collet chuck for a gear like this, which has a thread on the inside. And we use a hub nut, which has the threads on the inside instead of the outside, to receive things like this worm with a screw on the end. And so these two can screw into each other. Next up, you have this hub nut and flat hub collet that screw in around a piece that has this circle with these two from the inside to secure that piece in place. And you'll commonly see this on things like this pulley right here, which is also a very useful piece in general because it just has a lot of grooves. For example, like you can use it like this or these holes down here and this ridges that you can insert axles into. But, but these hub nuts, screw around these components and secure them to the axle to make it spin with the axle. So these are also very useful to have when you're working with Fisher Technic parts, especially on things like this 40 tooth gear, which definitely need this hub nut in order to be able to spin. Before I end off the video, let me show you the input. So the last parts I want to show you in this video are the quintessential input, which is this hand crank which goes onto a hub nut and allows you to drive a gear or a pulley. And the usual output, at like this fan here that you would put onto a gear in order to measure, for example, how many rotations it might have in a given time frame, which for a fan is much easier than trying to measure the amount of rotations of this completely black gear that doesn't have a marked teeth to allow you to tell how many rotations it's made. So this might be fairly usable as a output. I'm not sure if you can blow on it and use it as a sort of wind power. Um, I've never tried it before. I think it's mostly cosmetic, but if you've used this to power something by blowing on it or using a fan, let me know. I'm interested to see how versatile these parts are and Maybe this fan might actually be designed to be used as a way to create a uh, rotation. Hmm. But anyway, that's all for now. But anyway, that's all for now. Those are the miscellaneous parts I want to go over for Fisher Technic. Of course, there are so many more parts, but these are the ones that just sprung to mind and you might be using in your projects later in your engineering career, or just working with Fisher Technic. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.